Good afternoon, and welcome to TCAM Thursdays, your midday cultural break. I'm Dr. Lana Reeves, the Education and Community Outreach Director here at the Kansas African American Museum. Today, I'm sitting with... I am Paris Cunningham, the Curator of Collections here at the Kansas African American Museum. And today, we want to talk about a special and um, really awesome woman who has made some amazing contributions in the art world. Her name is Dr. Samela Lewis, and she is known as the godmother of African American art. Tell us a little bit about her and her contributions. So Dr. Samela Lewis is actually very significant and special to the Kansas African American Museum. Um, she made quite a few contributions and Plenty of those can be seen in our current exhibition titled Through Our Eyes, Perspectives of African-American Life in the 20th Century. And um, this exhibition has artwork that spans from the early 1900s all the way up until the 1990s that show what life was like for African-Americans, both on a um, outer level and on an inner or introspective level. And so some of those, um, some of the pieces in this exhibition chronicle civil rights, they chronicle the Harlem Renaissance, um, some of the Industrial Revolution, and also life in the South um, with depictions of Mardi Gras and kind of what our ancestors were like, as well as pieces that reflect our inner lives or how we thought and felt about the people, things, and experiences that we had in that time. And so Dr. Lewis contributed quite a bit quite a few pieces to this exhibition um, with her contributions to our collection, which are here in our main gallery and also in our Africa to Kansas gallery. Yes, as a matter of fact, she's known as not only an artist, but an art historian, as well as a institution builder. So one of the institutions that she helped build, obviously, is this one with her collection that she donated to us. And then um, if I understand correctly, a, a majority, I think just about everything in our Africa to Kansas came from Dr. Lewis. Yeah, so, quite, especially the statement pieces there. Um, they came from her travels through Africa where she collected um, artifacts and pieces so that African-Americans could connect their heritage to the practices and the artwork that was displayed there in Africa. So let's, let's just go back and start from the beginning. How did Dr. Lewis come into this world and get into art? <laughs> That's a good question. I like the way you phrased that. Um, so Dr. Lewis was actually born in New Orleans, Louisiana, um, but she lived in a small town about 50 miles from New Orleans. She grew up on a strawberry farm with her father and her sisters. Her mother was in the picture with them. However, her mother and father divorced, which kind of um, pushed her mom a little bit further away from her immediate life, but her mom still had a significant impact on her upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, and when she was younger, she um, tended to go to the French Quarter. And there she would see all of the artwork that artists would bring in to the city and display there or create. And she loved to go and see the new things that were there. Yeah. So I understand that it was one particular day that caused her not only to um, witness some interesting art, but to fall basically into some art training. Yeah. So interestingly enough, um, upon her visits to the French Quarter, of course, when you get older, you you find friends, you have different experiences. So one day, um, Samela was traveling through the French Quarter with a friend, and they were looking at some of the little shops along the way. And they saw into a window that there was a an African American lady mm -hmm. standing in this window, um, in one of the most in one of the more adult districts. <laughs> um, but the lady kind of motioned to them to come inside. And once they got inside the little shop, they found that um, the lady was with an Italian painter. Mm -hmm. And so, because the lady fancied Samela and her friend they were afforded about two years of painting lessons with the Italian painter. And this kind of helped to really elevate the work that Samela was able to do and how she portrayed her feelings and her experiences through her art. Awesome. So two years of training and witnessing awesome art in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Right, and all for free. 
for free. Yeah. Amazing. So now, but she is something of a trailblazer too, because she has quite an awesome education. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? <laughs> yes. So Dr. Lewis actually, um, she graduated high school and went on to, I want to say Dillard University. Yes. Mm -hmm. She went to Dillard University in um, Louisiana. And while she was there, she met a wonderful, opinionated, and influential professor there, um, an art instructor by the name of Elizabeth Catlett, who we know at the museum as a prolific um, artist. She's a painter. She did prints. Um, she did sculpture. She's an amazing and, and well, well-known African-American artist. Um, and so Dr. Lewis got to learn from Elizabeth Catlett while she was at Dillard University, and they actually developed a really very um, lucrative and close relationship as mentor and mentee. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> Dr. Lewis actually got had some some interesting experiences with her and developed her own passion for civil rights activism as well through Miss um, Elizabeth Catlett. Yeah, and I, I understand that she also had a couple of kind of scary experiences with her, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wonder, I think now uh, Dr. Lewis would call those eye-opening experiences, but definitely then they were nerve-wracking because as a young college student coming from the South, uh, Samella was taught that in order to get where you wanted to go in life, you had to lead with a demure and kind of reserved mm -hmm. um, attitude or presence. And Elizabeth Catlett was the exact opposite. She came from the North and she thought that whatever she felt or whatever she needed to say, especially if it had to do with injustice, she would do that regardless. And so there was an instance where Dr. Lewis and um, Elizabeth Catlett had gotten on a bus and they were going somewhere. And as they got on the bus, the bus driver came back to where they were mm -hmm. and put the for colors only or colored seating sign and ha almost handed it to Elizabeth Catlett mm -hmm. as if to say, you put this here and nobody, you know, past you can be white in these seats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Elizabeth Catlett kind of looked and said, OK, so she took this sign up to the front of the bus and, and told the bus driver, you do your own dirty work as if to say, you place this yourself. I'm not doing this. This is not my job. And the bus driver did not take the sign from her. So Elizabeth Catlett threw the sign out of the bus window. <laughs> Amazing. She threw the sign yes, out the she window. She threw the sign out of the window, went back to her seat and back to what she was doing. A little frustrated or perturbed, but, you know, mm -hmm. she went back to it. And Samela Lewis was kind of like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am not sure of the year that this happened, but I know that... If I am correct, Dr. Samela Lewis was in college in the early 60s, I want to say. Mm -hmm. So this was the early 1960s when <laughs> during the the greater portion of the civil rights movement. So this wasn't, you know, at that time, something someone yeah. would do. Right. Naturally. Yeah. <laughs> so not only was um, Dr. Lewis kind of the opposite of. Uh, Professor Catlett, she was something because like, there was the demure Dr. Lewis and the bold Mrs. Catlett. But at the same time, Dr. Lewis had her moments too, because I understand that she kind of got asked to leave Florida at some point in her life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm still not sure if she got asked to leave Florida, but as um, Dr. Lewis progressed and began to learn herself in um, while she was in college and when she became a professor and mm -hmm. got her doctorate and everything, um, she started to advocate for civil rights as well. Mm -hmm. And it became a very large part of her life. And she went all throughout the state of Florida um, preaching about or teaching and, and um, portraying the importance of anti-segregation or what we now call desegregation. Right. Um, and she did so much work in the state and in the cities that she was in that the governor was actually kind of looking to her and saying, OK, so you've got to leave because we're not doing that and you're making a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. So we need you to figure that out or get out. And um, I think that she eventually ended up uh, moving away from Florida. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, and you mentioned that she got a doctor because I understand that she was that was that was kind of a first two that she, not only did she get a doctor, she got two. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. <laughs> so Dr. Samela Lewis, actually, when she um, was at Dillard University, which is a historically black college or university or what we call HBCUs, mm -hmm. um, she actually transferred from Dillard by the direction of uh, Miss Elizabeth Catlett. Um, and went to Hampton University. She was offered scholarships to both Hampton and to Iowa State, but she decided to stay at an HBCU because of the support that she would get from that community. Mm -hmm. So she went on from Dillard to Hampton and then from Hampton to, I believe, Ohio State University. And at Ohio State, she ended up getting her doctorate in both fine art and in art history. And she was the first African-American to receive those degrees like ever. That is pretty awesome, but she did a lot with that as well. So tell us yeah. a little bit more about her institution building. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she actually received those degrees by the time she was 30 years old. So she had quite a time, a bit of time left mm -hmm. to create artwork and then also to create spaces for other artists to display and have their artwork um, praised and lauded like other their, their white counterparts. Um, and so in her time after graduating, she did a lot of, of um, she was a professor for a lot of time. So she was in academia. Mm -hmm. I believe if I'm correct, um, she was a full-time professor at four, five, six, at seven, mm -hmm. six, yeah, at six or seven universities. And some of those include Morgan State University, Florida A&M, um, the State University of New York. Scripps College, that's where she ended her career, and then California State Dominguez Hills and California State Long Beach or Cal State. And when you say end, you mean ended her career as a professor. Yes. She's, she's still living and she's still pretty <laughs> busy doing stuff. So yes. what else did she do along the way? Yes. So along the way, um, like we said before, she um, contributed pieces here at TCAM, but also she found, helped to found and funded for the first three years, the Los Angeles Museum of African American Art. And I believe currently it's um, known as the Museum of Africa, yeah, Museum of African American Art um, in LA. Mm -hmm. And that's still running and still going to this day. And one thing Dr. Lewis always thought was important, especially being an artist herself, and knowing such prolific and influential artists like Elizabeth Catlett and Charles White, um, she wanted to collect and preserve the history that came with the pieces created by African-American artists. And she also, not, not only that, she wanted to be able to show those pieces. Mm -hmm. She thought it was important that not only should we create and have our pieces sold and collected and um, appreciated, but they should be appreciated in spaces like these in museums where younger people and people who don't know about our culture can learn them as well. And so um, she took it upon herself to make sure that these pieces got into museums. You know, artists like Romare Baradin and Jacob Lawrence and William Pajou, she wanted those artists to have the same kind of acclaim that their white counterparts got because their artwork was just as good, if not better. Yeah, I even understand, too, that even in our own Africa to Kansas room, where just about every piece is from the continent, there's just two pieces in the room that are not. One is by mm -hmm. her, the green mask, and the other is by Hale Woodruff. And the reasons why those were put there was to show even, you know, that the influence that African culture has on artists throughout the world not just African-Americans, but throughout the world. And it pretty much showed, you know, you can look at those two pieces and see it is all over them. That, right. That the, the influence that African art and culture has on, on Right, all. right. And something interesting, even in this exhibition that I saw, was how toward the end of the 20th century, into the 80s and the 90s, um, a lot of African-American artists started to incorporate that African influence into their artwork. And you can see that by the colors they use, the textures and patterns, and the themes that they use in their artwork, it, it became um, important to reintegrate mm -hmm. the African influence into our artwork and to appreciate African art as well. Um, 
along with the you know traditional structure that we know as as fine art you know yeah and then with all of that you know starting museums creating art herself and then recording histories she also wrote books you know i thought it was pretty interesting you know she had we have a couple of copies here of her black artist on art and i was really drawn to volume two because on the cover of it is my professor and mentor from temple university where i got my um, terminal degree in africology is dr malefi asante and he of course is the uh, program chair and I was just amazed how, you know, that whole six degrees of separation that I come to this place first and find out about Dr. Lewis. Yeah. And then in finding out more about her, I discovered too that she's connected to somebody that I know and right. worked for and studied under at Temple University in my grad school studies. But we have several, like I said, several copies of these books. Um, it's Black Artists on Art, um, volumes one and two. And should you mention TCAM Thursday, you come down, we'll make a great deal for you on these books in our um, heritage shop here yeah. at the Kansas African American Museum. But, yeah. but even that, that's not all. Because one of the things that is still here is this awesome magazine that she created. Because she said, right. you know, magazines were more affordable than books. But right. tell us about her magazine. Let me take a look just so that I make sure I'm getting the title right. Because it changed a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Um, due to, you know, the way that it was produced and how it progressed. Um, so she started a magazine or a certain issues of what's now called the Inter International Review of African American Art. And um, it's still carried on to this day at Hampton University. Mm -hmm. um, and it pretty much carries on and keeps on being published to show how African-American art has changed, um, what continues to be important in our imagery. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to showcase a lot of new and old artists. And just like you said, one of the cool things, one of the things I love about art, and I think that we don't think about very often, um, is that artists don't live in a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> we tend to think about artists like, oh, Samela Lewis, oh, Romare Baradin, Elizabeth, like they're just these singular people who have never interacted or touched or been influenced by each other. But just like her book shows and even a couple of pieces in this exhibition um, shows that artists interact and we have to in order to, in order to survive. And that's how a lot of these pieces got here. That's how a lot of our pieces get to other places because we have to appreciate one another. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And we're going to bring it on, bring it back home here that we picked this particular, matter of fact, you picked this particular spot because you also wanted to showcase this awesome piece of work that's by Dr. Lewis. Can you tell us a little bit more about it as yes. well as kind of because, you know, she's not one of those artists that just gets a canvas up and or does a pre-sketch or whatever. She has a special style of how she creates as well. Right. Which is <laughs> very different, especially now. Um, in our times, but so this piece here is called Interior, and I am not sure about why the title is that way, but I love that title because I believe it speaks to the introspective or really taking a look at the inner workings of um, how we deal with emotion or how artists deal with emotion, specifically um, Dr. Samela Lewis in this um, piece. And so the background behind this piece is that um, at the time that Dr. Samela Lewis created this, she was living in or around the biggest swamp in Louisiana with her aunt Laura. And while she was there, um, she remembers having a lamp similar to the one in this image and also kind of being in this kind of space. So in this, in this image here, this is actually a young boy who's reading a book. <laughs> it's not a it's not a young lady. I, when I first saw it, I thought it was a young lady, but it's a young boy. And you can see in here that there are so many different textures. If you get an up close look, if you come into the museum and see it, you can see all the different colors that are etched into the boy's shirt and all of the the value and the color and the different tones that are cre used to create this image. 
And Dr. Lewis had, like you said, she had a specific process. So an artist like me, I usually have a reference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might see something in, um, you know, just everyday life that I'm like, oh, I want to recreate that. And I get that kind of idea. Well, so Dr. Lewis had a different method. She would simply go to or or start with a blank canvas no specific image in mind, no sketch laid out on that canvas, but she would have a feeling or some kind of emotion that she wanted to portray. And she said herself, she said that um, she would start with the canvas and make a single stroke of paint. And from there, she would develop a story, she would develop um, characters and images that portrayed whatever her feeling was in that moment. And so, Whenever you look at pieces created by her, you know, like this one, you can really dive into and and search for what it is that she meant to portray and what it is she was feeling when she created it. Now, when you were telling me about this, you told me that there's, she, there's something about Easter eggs. First, what is an Easter egg? And then show us what the Easter eggs would be in this particular piece of art. Yeah, so I, I tend to think in art that Easter eggs kind of connect back to other things, either regarding that artist or regarding history or other pieces of work or other things in, in TV literature and, and whatever else. And so in this painting, like I said before, this oil lamp is an Easter egg for the time and the place that Dr. Lewis was living. And so since she had that oil lamp, it's a piece that connects her or roots her back to this piece because it anchors her to the experience. And then also at the very top of the painting, you can see that there's the word Jax, J-A-X, etched into the wood grain of the wall. And I, have, I haven't discovered yet what that means, but I think that that's so cool because it draws your eye to the top and it makes you run down the rest of the, the image, but it also makes you wonder, okay, so what does that mean? And I love pieces like this because it makes you go and do more research. You know, that it doesn't stop with just that view. So now, um, one of the things that she liked to say, well, one of the things that she did say, she said, art is not a luxury as many people think. It is a necessity. It documents history. It helps educate people and stores knowledge for generations to come. And this is one of the quotes from Dr. Samela Lewis. And I think that you've pretty much underscored what, what she meant by that, first by looking at her art, and then also by all that she did, this institution building. And then I understand that that, you know, this is her professional side, but her personal side. Can you tell us a little bit more about her personal side? Um, that's a good question. You might have to help me with this one because I know you did some research too. Um, but I think that on her personal side, I mean, she ended up in her life getting married, mm -hmm. having children, and still living a very full life that wasn't dedicated but solely to art. Because I think that as artists, something that we have to do is that we have to experience the world. Mm -hmm. And we have to experience the world around us with others or else we can't portray new things. And so Dr. Lewis was was very sure to do that and to continue to live her life and continue to grow. So, yeah. So, and then we'd like to invite you to celebrate Dr. Lewis's birthday as it comes up here on February the 27th. She was born in 1923. So she's about, what, 97 years old. It will be her her age yes. this year. So she's still creating. Yes. And again, we just want to say thank you for joining us today taking a mid -culture, midday cultural break here with TCAM Thursdays. Paris? Yes, thank you for joining us. And make sure you stop in to get a look at Through Our Eyes, Perspectives of African-American Life in the 20th Century. And come appreciate all of the pieces that Dr. Lewis herself collected and some of the wonderful pieces by great and notable African-American artists here in our gallery. So thanks so much for joining us. And we hope to see you in the next one in the first first Thursday of March. See ya.